Today is one of those days in which the preacher would do well to simply get out of the way and let the liturgy speak for itself. But just a few words first. <laughs> Monday, Thursday is overflowing with meaning, ritual, and symbols. In one service, we have the institution of the Lord's Supper, foot washing, removal of the sacrament, and stripping of the altar. We could spend months talking about each of these things and still wouldn't cover the depth of meaning in these traditions. But don't worry so much about the words today. Pay attention to the actions. Let them seep into your bones. Today is the beginning of what we refer to as the Holy Triduum, or the three days at the heart of the Christian narrative. Notice how Jesus appears at the beginning of this story. <coughs> he is not enthroned with a crown, radiating glory, or preparing to pass on a mantle of authority. He is clad in a towel. A towel is something that is used to dry dishes, Wash children, wipe tables, clean wounds, cool fevers, warm aching joints, swaddle babies, mop up sweat, blot away tears. It is a cleaning agent, a mop, a sponge, the stuff of the most ordinary human messes. And yet, here is our Savior, clad in a towel. The mantle of Jesus' authority is a symbolic cleaning agent of human messes, not the stuff of royalty. As Pastor Nadia Bowles Weber states, never once did Jesus scan the room for the best example of holy living and send that person to tell others about him. He always sent stumblers and sinners. God meets us with dirt under our nails and on our bodies, not once we're clean enough to come into the sanctuary or take a proper seat at the dinner table. Therefore, perhaps there is no, more, no vehicle more convenient than a towel that both clothed him and dried the feet of those to whom he was ministering. Monday, Thursday is the day that we remember the command that Jesus gives us to love. Mondi comes from Latin, meaning mandatum, which we translate to a mandate, a command to love. Now, already, we have a problem. Love is not something that can be commandeered, invoked, or demand, or produced at will. Love is a feeling, is it not? It develops over time and often in ways that defy explanation. Certainly we are able to act out of a place of love. But how exactly is it that Christ commands love of us? Jesus invokes love through the means of an example. We have the choice to act out of a place of love, hatred, contempt, jealousy, or fear. The model of love that Jesus gives us is humble, vulnerable, and selfless. Perhaps above all, it is thoughtful. Jesus knew whom he was dealing with and was well aware of the flaws of Judas and Peter in particular. Yet rather than react dismissively or in accordance with what they might have deserved, Jesus responds with the most generous possible interpretation. He responds in love rather than reacting in judgment. Peter demonstrates just how difficult it can be to receive love that one does not deserve. While we may at first read Peter's protest as a form of misunderstanding, it ultimately masks a form of pride. Peter does not wish to humble himself for fear of what it might ultimately reveal. Allowing another to love us, truly love us, is difficult. It, 
it un immediately unmasks our vulnerabilities and leaves us exposed. We ought to take courage from the exposure Peter first endured. Jesus closes the scene with these words, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Meaning, you also must become vulnerable and risk exposure. Meaning, we also must cultivate the habit of responding when we much prefer to react. We also must learn how to act grounded in generosity rather than judgment. It is much easier for me to imagine myself reacting out of self-preservation as Peter or Judas did in these last days of Jesus' ministry. But this is the heart of Christian discipleship to be grounded in love so that we might respond generously. Even then, it is possible that our generosity will not produce the results we had imagined. Former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, summarized the events of Monday, Thursday in these stark terms. Jesus binds himself to vulnerability before he is bound, literally, by human violence. We don't respond out of a place of generosity and vulnerability because the world will provide a better reaction. We respond out of generosity and vulnerability because it shapes our heart to be more like Jesus, full of love. Love is the only audacious, ridiculous, non-linear emotion that can make sense of what Jesus asks us to do. Love is the only way that washing the feet of another seems hopeful. I do wonder, what might have happened if foot washing became the primary sacrament of the church? What if we weren't concerned about priestly holiness and access to God on a beautiful table such that only those who were chosen received that sacrament? What if we had followed in the spirit of Jesus' extravagant love and took the time to wash one another's feet, week in and week out? That kind of vulnerability and honesty is uncomfortable. But I think that's exactly what Jesus was implying. The brilliance of this overly crowded service as our church mothers and fathers designed it is that it conveys the same urgency that Jesus experienced at this point in the Gospels. Jesus was out of time. The time Jesus had left to explain the significance of his ministry, the depth of his love, that time had evaporated. The fate that awaited him in Jerusalem was more and more apparent, given the unrest that he had created. Jesus gathered, gathered those whom he loved one last time before things completely deteriorated. We, too, are short on time. In a few moments, I'm going to invite you to do something uncomfortable. I'm going to invite you to be vulnerable in a rather odd way, having your feet washed. And whether you choose to come forward or not, my hope for you tonight is that you might prayerfully consider not what it means to be loved excessively, but how that excessive love feels. How might you be changed by acts of love that are excessive, generous, and unexpected. It is possible that you will be left with nothing but a towel cleaning up the mess that humanity makes. Even still, receive this command to love and all that comes with it. Amen. Amen. Amen.